Here is a demonstration of a software project I wrote for my computer networking class at the University of Calgary. It is an implementation of the multi-Paxos protocol and there is a video explaining what exactly the multi-Paxos protocol is in the description of this video along with an actual link to the source code of this project. Basically what the multi-Paxos protocol does is it uh, maintains consistency in a network uh, or uh, yeah a network of nodes so like a cluster of computers so say you have like a database that you want to have uh, replicated onto different computers in case one of them gets hit by a meteor or something and maybe it's bank account information so I if the computer gets hit by a meteor I mean you don't want to lose someone's bank account information now that seems pretty simple um, but then you have to worry about now what if the value of that bank account is updated uh, like say someone withdraws money and then what will happen is that change has to be propagated to all the other uh, replicants like you can't have one replica out of date or anything and that's again seems pretty easy but it gets quite difficult when you're in an environment where uh, the network links links between nodes can fail arbitrarily, messages can just not be delivered, nodes can suddenly die and then come back up again. It, it gets quite complicated when you have data that just needs to not uh, you know, disappear and you're in a distributed environment with failures. So I wrote basically a protocol that allows you to do that and I'm just gonna run a quick demo of it here. So I'm gonna, I have open here terminals uh, these are five different servers running on Amazon Web Services and I'm going to run the app on each of them. So I'm going to run that and so it's just kind of waiting for connections from the other nodes in the cluster. We see here that they've been established there and all of them are up now. Okay, great. So the basics of how Paxos works, or multi-Paxos works, is that one of the nodes is elected leader. And there's all sorts of complicated leadership election uh, algorithms you can make, but I just did it pretty simply and said it so that the highest uh, ranked node is always a leader. So in this case, this is node 5, so it's going to be the leader. And how the leader is elected is that all the nodes send heartbeat signals to each other. And if a node has not received, a heartbeat signal from a higher ranked node in, I don't know, a couple seconds, then it assumes that it is the leader and it starts acting like the leader. So all of these nodes, uh, the, these four over here, they're assuming they're not leaders because they're receiving signals from the node 5. So if we say give it a request like test, it'll say it received the client request but fails because it's not the leader and it's the same for all of these here. But if we go to um, node 5, which is currently the leader, and say test, then it receives the request and runs the Paxos algorithm to propagate that value to all of these. Now, the way it does that, I mean, I'm not going to go over the specifics of how the algorithm works. You can see that in the other video, and it gets pretty complicated uh, with a lot of edge cases. But uh, basically, it's it's overcomplicated or it seems to be overcomplicated but what that does is it lets it handle all sorts of failures for instance there are five nodes here and this cluster is able to withstand the complete failures of two of the nodes and as long as at least three nodes are up and running then no information will be lost and this can happen at any time like the node can crash in the middle of a uh, request all that stuff and the node can actually crash and then come back up again later and has a weird state that's sort of different from the current state of additional requests have been made and the whole cluster will kind of handle that case too uh, it won't cause any weird corruption where nodes have different data uh, so to demonstrate that I'm just gonna say hello world here there's a couple more requests so we see, if we look over here, we see that uh, test hello world has been propagated to this one along with these, which is, I mean, that's pretty much what you expect because there's no failures here. So if 
we go ahead and cause a failure on this node. I'm just going to go Control C, and I've set up my program so that it clears any writes. It, it catches the Control C or the SIGINT uh, signal, and it clears any writes before it shuts down. So it's all safe to just do that. Then, so this node here is down. This is node three. We see that uh, these nodes have registered that they cannot can no longer talk to this node. And if we just go ahead and say, um, make a couple more requests here, and then say this comes back up, we'll see that it actually syncs back up with the cluster, and it's completely fine. Everything's all good, and if we give additional requests, it'll also receive them. So, I don't know, call it node 5, yep. So this node is now receiving requests. Now, something interesting happens if we kill the leader. So this is the leader over on the right side. So go Control C. So this this might not have elected yet. Uh, yeah, okay. So see proposal. F uh, sorry, this one, uh, node four, which is the next highest leader, or next highest node, has elected itself leader since it has not heard from this node in a couple seconds. And if we start the leader back up again, it'll take a bit longer to sync up just because it has to take back control of the cluster. So if we put this again, then you see we, we have like all sorts of odd uh, proposal, a, a bunch of basically a bunch of extra proposals are being sent as this node has to catch up with um, the proposals which have changed as a result of this different node becoming leader. Okay, so to show how these, just, just kind of showcase the durability of this cluster, I'm just going to kill two of the nodes. So node 5 and node 4 are now dead. So now we have nodes 1, 2, 3. 3 will have elected itself leader because it's the current highest. And so we'll go, I am the leader. And great, it's... Uh, there we go, it's synced up. Finalized value. Great. Okay. So the leadership has been transferred to this node. And if we then maybe I don't know, we'll start we'll start up five again. And leave four dead for now. I don't know. Say number five is alive. I love that movie as a kid. And start four again. Yeah, so you, know, you can just kind of play around with it, starting things, stopping things, and consistency is just maintained, and it's really great. Now, part of why consistency is maintained where you can like restart nodes is that values are being cached to stable storage, like disk. They're not being stored just in memory. And right now, I, I'm just doing that with writing to files, which is really fragile, and I want to switch it to actually use a database that's ACID compliant. Um, I haven't got around to doing that yet, and yeah, it's it, it works pretty well. If, I mean, it's not going to be used in production at this point if it's just using files. And there's a couple other things I need to handle, like uh, there's some concurrency issues. But for now, I think it it's a, it took a lot of work to make this app. Actually, there's all sorts of things you have to worry about, and I wrote it in Go. It actually works really Go works really well for this sort of concurrent programming. Um, stuff. I mean, it's, it's built for networked applications and stuff. So I, I would recommend it if you're looking at implementing Paxos yourself. And yeah, so this is this is the demo. I've actually this is originally intended for my professor, the demo for my professor. But uh, if you watched it and you thought this was pretty neat, I am available to answer any questions, and you can see the source code. And yeah, so signing off.